But maybe there's some strategy to all this. Let's bring in our think tank tonight to get to the bottom of it. Joining us tonight on the program, ladies and gentlemen, Rick King is back, trial attorney, uh, former police lieutenant. He's down in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Lara Yuretzian is with us, criminal defense attorney in Los Angeles. And also on West Palm Beach, uh, Dave Ehrenberg, the state attorney for Palm Beach County. Great to have everyone aboard tonight. Um, uh, Dave, I'll start with you as, as the state's attorney down there in, in Palm Beach County. Is there some strategy to this? Why on earth would you want two preliminary hearings for basically the same set of facts? Why do you want to put your witnesses up there more than once? Shouldn't you just put this whole thing together now and move on? Yeah, that's what most prosecutors would do. But perhaps uh, there is a procedural issue, as one of your guests at the during the package said, that would make it happen later. And another reason, it could be that they're just waiting for the murder child uh, charges to inevitably be filed, and then they can consolidate it then. Another reason could be that prosecutors may have some reason to believe that the two defendants are going to point fingers at each other, or maybe there's a witness confrontation issue that would apply to one of the defendants and not the other. So there are a bunch of reasons uh, that could explain why prosecutors have not consolidated yet. I think eventually that the defense lawyers are going to be the ones to file the motion to sever the defendants. Mm -hmm. I do think prosecutors will try to consolidate, and then the defense lawyers will try to sever it because it's in their client's interest for them to make each other out to be the bad guy. Yeah, but this is a, a different case. And, 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 and Rick, what happened uh, earlier in the, at the last hearing was the defense was, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm with them on this, uh, they wanted an open trial. They wanted cameras in the courtroom, and it was the prosecution saying, get that camera out of here. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's just opposite land out there in Idaho or if uh, there's some strategy to all of this. Um, if you're the defense, though, you're just sitting back. You're loving this, right? You get, you get two bites at the apple with these FBI witnesses who are going to testify. Absolutely. If you're the defense in this case and they're going to have two separate preliminary hearings, you're going to get two different, two different uh, hearings of people telling the same story twice. Very difficult for you to testify twice in the same way in two different hearings. So as a defense lawyer, we're happy with that, but I don't think it's going to be as opposite as you think. I don't think that you're going to find the defense lawyers in this case moving to bring this case together. I think they're going to sit back and see what the state's doing. Uh, Mr. Ehrenberg's correct. There's plenty of reasons why they wouldn't have joined the cases together at this point. Ultimately, though, um, there's going to be a point in time when I believe they will do it. And I think when they try to do it, the defense is going to object. Um, Lara, let me ask you. We're getting ready for this big hearing next week. Um, the murder investigation is still continuing. Everybody knows that. It's looming on, on top of all of this. Is there any chance, either at the preliminary hearing or at a trial, right, for these charges, not for murder charges, but for these charges, with the murder investigation still looming, that either one of these defendants, Chad the Prophet, former grave digger, uh, or Lori Vallow, a former contestant for Mrs. Texas back in 2004, I saw it on YouTube, a chance that either one of them testifies? Oh, I find it hard to believe that either one of them is going to testify. I can actually see defense attorneys, and I'm surprised why it hasn't happened. If there's a looming uh, uh, investigation, mm -hmm for a murder, uh, I would want to wait and see what else there is before I proceed. How do you cross-examine witnesses? How do you strategize as a defense attorney when there's additional discovery that's coming in, potentially coming in, or additional charges that are coming your client's way? Not only would I not consider putting the client or the defendant on the stand, I'd want to buy myself some time to see what else is coming their way before I start doing any type of cross-examination, whether it be at a preliminary hearing or elsewhere, because you plan your strategy based on, as a defense counsel, based on the discovery, based on the reports, based on the investigation, the evidence that's against your client. You know, I'm a former prosecutor, and what we always hated doing was trying a case when the defendant could point at an empty chair in the courtroom. That's why we like to consolidate it. When there's more than one defendant, put them all in there at the same time so the jury can see all of them, and I could just point at that table, uh, unlike them pointing at an empty chair. But when we come back, I'm going to tell you why, even if this case is consolidated, my guess, my educated guess, is that both... Chad and Lori's attorneys are going to point at this guy 
and his empty chair because guess what? He's dead. Okay, what was he?